Selwyn here for winterstrength.com, bringing you another weekly training vlog. Uh, this will be the third week of the self-modified version of the strength template by Bobo Medicine. Uh, kind of tying in some general conditioning, GPP, strongman style training into the strength template. So we're <laughs> experimenting with trying to see how much more I can add to a template that already drives up some good numbers. Highly recommend checking out the template. Uh, this will be the third time I've run it. If you haven't watched the previous videos, check them out. Um, this will be the third time I've run it. Uh, the first two times I've seen some good results driving up that one rep max strength. Uh, all I'm trying to do this time around is see if I can add some more uh, variation to the template to see if I can drive up conditioning, keep conditioning that I developed in the Dark Horse training program, as well as include some more uh, strongman style lifts without having to increase the days or amount of time I'm working out just due to scheduling conflicts. Uh, with that being said, I will not be doing a review of the strength template because this isn't the strength template as it's written, so I've already given this a great rating and review. Uh, long story short, get the program because it's a great template. Uh, I've had the new Power Building 2 template, so there's a new wave of programs from Barbell Medicine. Definitely check those out as well. Uh, they're a bit more data-driven because obviously they've had more uh, customers, clients, user programs, they've learned a, more, a lot more things out of that. So the new the new wave of templates, 2.0s, I highly recommend those as well. Uh, can't go wrong with any of the templates, go check them out. So we have a third week here, again, more substitutions with the supersetting and the additions and modifications of the program. I think that's just gonna be part and parcel of how this 12 week program is going to shuffle out just because each week I'm thinking of something different to do and I know I'll probably advise you to not do that um, but this is kind of a self-experimental phase of training that I'm trying to figure out so I'm really wanting to just play around with some movements uh, a lot of the things are staying the same but there are slight modifications that are happening over the course of each week um, and if you, you stay tuned uh, you watch the previous videos of this training block, you'll see exactly what's changing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out and seeing how my body responds to those changes that I'm doing across the course of the week. Uh, one thing that I uh, am addressing is the fact that we're playing with high stress levels and high accumulated fatigue. Uh, the program as written is quite stressful because it does drive up a lot of gains. Right? You are exposing the body to a lot of stress. So with that, high stress level by adding more to it we're seeing if my body can keep up with it hopefully it can hopefully I'm getting a lot more of the things in check paying a little bit more attention to the nutrition definitely focusing on getting some sleep trying to stay <laughs> rested and, and less stressed over the course of the day the course of the weeks so hopefully all that helps play into mitigating the stress factors here so and another reason all the changes are happening is I'm remembering a lot of things that I've learned about programming how to mitigate stress, how to manage stress, those are a lot of things that come into play with programming because it's not just, programming isn't just about the exercise you do. Uh, one thing I'm learning is that it, the exercises you do are kind of, they're important but they don't play the biggest role of programming. Anyone can tell you to do squat, deadlift, bench press, do some curls, do some pull-ups. The, the movements are kind of all there. Really what we want to play around with is load management, intensity, uh, prescription of sets, reps, and things of that nature. So what changes is, what's more important is how you structure a program over the course of the day. Things like, is it three days? Is it four days? Is there three minutes rest, two minutes rest? How many sets are we doing? How many reps are we doing? What percentage is that? Is it gonna be based on your one rep max? Is it gonna be based on RPE, uh, reps in reserve? There are all these things that play around with a part of a program and the more different programs you're able to do over a lifetime, the bigger base of knowledge you'll have as to what works personally for yourself. So the things that, one of the things that separates advanced athletes from novice athletes is that they know what works and what doesn't work for their body and you're able to tailor training programs to that and help your coach help you figure out what works for your body and goals and what doesn't work for you. Um, Maybe you're the type of person that responds to volume training, where you're training every day really hard. Maybe that's your body type, your makeup, your genetic taste and preferences of playing in here. Or maybe you're the type of person that responds very well to low frequency. So all of these things, um, no one training program will work for everybody, but one training program can help everybody in some shape, 
form or another. So whether you're so whether you're doing a program uh, as written or self-modifying it, I think you should definitely look at how your body is responding to that. Look at the program and learn how it is attempting to mitigate the stress and manage the accumulated fatigue that is going to occur over the course of 12, 16, seven weeks because that's how we're going to progress because it's that it's that game of stress recovery adaptation just that cycle the stress recovery the SRA cycle we're just doing that over and over again and the way the program addresses that is how that program is going to be mainly be different from other programs there's a lot of different theories out there about how to achieve that and none out of all the good programs there's not necessarily one that's better than the other it's what's best for you because obviously we've seen a lot of different people get a lot of different, a lot of good results out of a lot of different programs. So with that kind of anecdotal evidence there, you know that almost anything can work as long as you put in the work and it's based in somewhat sound principles. I don't know if there's anyone out there doing 100 squats every day all the time, so that's probably not the best program. But if you use a program that's got, you know, a history of training people under it, so who, if there's someone successful that's used it, Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. But then that's why you can go along and train different programs. And this is why we want to look at the long-term cycle. We'll look at like 10 years from now. How do you plan your training out? This 12-week training experiment won't necessarily detract from 12 years from now because we're still pushing out heavy weights. We're still learning about the body, learning about our own growth adaptation and how that's going to affect our training in the future. Uh, so what we'll do on now is, like the previous weeks, I'll switch over to some voiceover so we can do some analysis of what I have done right and what I have done wrong over the course of the week. So here we go, starting off with obviously a heavy single with the safety squat barbell or the SS jerk barbell. Uh, we hit here a top single at 410 pounds, which is an increase over last week. I, I think the movement is going well. I think my body is learning how to adapt kind of to the uh, the camera of the barbell. It still feels a lot more uh, unstable than the squat, the regular barbell squat. But again, I've trained with the flat barbell squat for a long, long time. And this is only maybe two years, two years old. So see, we hit good depth there. My knees come in a little bit. My back stays uh, relatively upright, which is good. I'm not able to keep control there. Here we have a bit more of a side angle that I tried to get hold of. The problem is the uh, uprights of the squat rack kind of get in the way. Uh, we drop that weight down to 315 for some back offsets. Uh, again, sticking relatively low reps, so it's five, five reps here. Again, I still like to use the squat shoes, even with the elevated heel. I think it works well uh, just to get used to that that elevation in the heel there. It does also add some stability to the feet. Uh, you notice in a lot of squat shoes, it'll be wider at the base than it is at the heel, if that makes sense. So you're actually pressing off of a, a wider platform. It hinted at the most of them. So that was good, I think. And I think that'll translate well to the regular squat. And here we have uh, a couple of ab wheel rollouts. Didn't get the camera lined up. But yeah, and then we just wrap that up with some fat grip pull-ups. I've been liking just throwing in the pull-up on the fat grip barbell, mainly because obviously the regular barbell's in the way. So using that fat grip pull-up bar is, has been good. Uh, the, really the only option. But I think it's been helping with some of the grip issues in the long run because we're really not able to grip that hard. And here we have our top single for the overhead press. Uh, this was a hundred and no, this was two hundred pounds, so fifteen pounds shy of my current one rep max. I think that goes up quite smoothly. Uh, no blacking out happening, which is a good which is a good thing. Uh, then we start off the superset here with some penley rows uh, relatively light weights only 185 pounds here for the penley rows doing those for reps of 10 uh, again i'm not too concerned with the back motion just because it's not really there to target and isolate the lats we're just wanting to get more work into the lats and train the body as a whole unit rather than focus on the back as a singular unit there uh, the grip and the stance, I kind of vary day by day. There's no real uh, set way that I like to grip or stand. Just whatever feels comfortable that day. Sometimes it's wider just because it feels like 
I want to put my hands out wider. So I think it's good to add some variability that way. And then we here we have the back offsets for the overhead press. And again, I think the Dark Horse program that I previously did really helped with overhead pressing, uh, getting the technique down because we did do a lot more pressing overhead than we did bench pressing. And I think that's showing here. Um, the form is kind of paying off. I'm getting the bar path a lot more uh, in line, I think, than I have in the past. And that just comes with obviously just training the movement more. Here we have the second day where we're doing opening off with uh, bench press and deadlift superset. Uh, I did mix it up this week to put the bench press before the deadlift and I think that uh, little change up does allow you to lift more weights for that first exercise you do even though we're kind of performing the back to back maybe there's some mental freshness here coming in or some weird mental game uh, but the bench press definitely felt a lot stronger than the deadlift did relatively speaking so here we have a top set We have our top set at uh, 300 pounds. Again, 15 pounds shy of my current one rep max. I think the, the, the bench press went up quite well. Uh, here we have setting up for the deadlift. Uh, this will be 455 pounds, uh, 40 pounds shy of my current one rep max. So a significant difference there, but probably uh, that's fine, especially with the way this program is working and the scheduling is going. I'm doing day one and day two back to back, so it falls on a Saturday, Sunday. I don't have that day rest in between. Um, so what I'll look at in the future is doing the bench deadlift before the squat overhead press to see how that helps. So what's funny is it's the, the great thing to do with filming yourself is that you'll be able to get some actual feedback retrospectively obviously so during the during the lift that felt a lot harder than it looked in the in the video because it came up quite quite quickly quite smoothly there wasn't really any sticking points um, so that's something I would definitely recommend you do just film yourself just to make sure that your RPE 8 is a true RPE 8 and here we have the volume work for the bench press just 225 repping that out again an increase over last week for five reps I feel this drives up some more uh, hypertrophy. Again, no shoulder pain, no bicep pain, and I think that's coming from using that safety squat barbell as well as bringing in the grip on the barbell uh, for the bench press. So one thing I've noticed when I really put those grips, the hands out wide for the bench press grip, I, I couple that with the low bar back squat positioning, I start to, I start to run into some shoulder issues. Uh, I've brought the grip in. As you can see there, it's not as wide as I could typically go. And that's just personal preference there. I think that comes with training history and understanding what your body leverages is and your own personal injury history as well. And here we have the deadlift volume work. Again, what I've been trying to do with the deadlift is minimize that bent over time. So I'm really trying to set up more in the upright standing position. Uh, take that deep breath in at the top rather than spend too much time at the bottom. I've noticed if I can go from standing to gripping and then standing up again, the, the deadlift feels a lot smoother. I think it's a lot less uh, like mental thought about it. So I'm kind of just getting more aggressive and not overthinking the movement, kind of getting back to a more natural movement pattern. But definitely during the warm ups, what I want to do is focus on technique and focus on that form. Here we move on to our second supersets for the day, which is a tempo squat, three count down, no pause at the bottom and three count back up. These are kind of brutal. I've been wanting to keep all of these squat accessory movement beltless over the course of the rest of the week, uh, just so that we can mitigate some more of that stress and not have uh, extra load than we could if we did wear a belt. And again, the great thing with the tempo squat, whatever the tempo may be, uh, obviously first off is hypertrophy and time under tension. So we're really driving up that time under tension where I could probably, you could probably finish a squat a uh, regular squat in the time it takes to go down or up but what you can do here is because it's so slow you can focus on your form and really I like to focus on where the balance is in my foot because I notice when my foot gets off balanced uh, the rest of the squat doesn't feel as solid as it normally does uh, what I could also do here is wear my heeled squat shoe I think that would probably be probably be beneficial since we are changing that movement slightly by not having the elevated heel especially if we want to get some of that repetition 
um, in the squat pattern since I'm not doing the typical low bar back squat for the heavy work for the week. But this is for reps of 10, so it is quite heavy uh, relatively, so we're only doing 215 pounds here. A significant drop, maybe 40% of my one rep max. But again, that huge time under tension and just that volume from doing 10 reps. And just superset that, uh, not with any barbar work, we're just doing uh, some ab wheels, ab wheel rollouts with the uh, supersetting there just to get more ab activation and core activation. And again, I think it's a good offset there just to add in some ab work. And again, this isn't going crazy, just reps of six, uh, nothing too insane. And I think coupling this with the beltless squat, we're definitely getting some good core activation. Um, getting some working on that stability in order to drive more weight up hoping that this does transfer through to our belted uh, low bar back squat and even the belted uh, safety squat barbell even though it is slightly less we are working on that balance and that timing there and we move on to day three again another beltless squat variation which is just the beltless squat uh, regular back squat uh, without a belt, obviously this is for 415 pounds uh, for reps of four with the knee sleeves and the heeled shoes. So we're kind of very mimicking a lot the competition style squat. You notice I don't hit depth. I'm about two inches shy of depth. Again, that's three inches shy of depth. And the knee slightly coming just a little bit, but I'm really happy with how the knee positioning is going. Um, there's a little bit of outward spread at the bottom, but that's fine just to hit that, try and hit that depth. But yeah, definitely depth was an issue there, something I need to work on in the future sets there because that just was two to three inches shy of depth every single time. And again, going back to the old classic uh, fat bar uh, chin-ups this time. So again, whether you want to do pull-ups or chin-ups, I don't think it matters. I think do both. That way you're able to get uh, both activation of the back and the biceps. We'll move on to a slingshot bench press. Again, really enjoying this movement. Uh, it was originally designed to help with shoulder pain, but I've I found that the tool is really great for overloading the bench press movement. So here we have 315 pounds, which is my current one rep max, uh, and I'm repping this out for four reps. So what, how this will translate over to a regular bench press is yet to be seen, uh, but we are playing around with super maximal weights going through a relatively similar amount of range of motion we're just adding some assistance from that elastic around the elbows i <laughs> i still want to use those wrist wraps just because i am slightly uh wary of the barbell dropping after that first incident there i know it's now possible so it's kind of playing in my head a little bit yeah, but I do like to wear those wrist wraps with the slingshot. But I think it is a good accessory movement. I think it's a good tool to get. Uh, I, I guess especially if you do have shoulder pain. But even if you don't have shoulder pain, uh, a cool implement to look into if you want to drive some more weight up. Just to see how that feels. Uh, it's I think it kind of mimics a bench shirt, but not really. But it is a great uh, tool. I would probably give that a 9 out of 10 for usefulness in the gym. Here we have some sandbag presses. Uh, first time introducing these. Th these are actually quite fun to do. <coughs> Sorry, the second week of introducing these. Um, I actually quite like the sandbag press as a movement. It throws that overhead press balance off kilter just because of that mass of the bag and the instability of the sand. Uh, both of the things go really well together to pair. In order to increase the difficulty somewhat just because of that technical uh, Ex execution of the lift there being slightly different than the regular barbell and also having to squeeze in on that bag adds a different dimension to the lift rather than having to squeeze a barbell up you're still having to maintain that back tightness bring it up and then rack like rest on the legs what are really cool is you get a heavier sandbag that'd be nice um it'd be fun to play around with the concrete atlas stones eventually but in a garage gym unless you have a dedicated setup I think the sandbag is more of a practical everyday solution just because I can do that. I can drop the sandbag on the ground without having to worry about damaging the floor or the sandbag. Um, if we had an atlas stone and pushing that overhead, I would have to have uh, introduced some quite thick padding on the floor there at a stand, do something where that concrete 
all isn't dropping on the floor from a great height. Um, so with the the sandbag, a great option there because we can throw it around. It's not going to damage anything. Uh, I've had that for, I think, close to a year now. And I've been treating it really roughly and there's no signs of wear and tear. I, I dare say the Rogue's probably it's the same if not better I'm yet to see what happens with the Titan sandbags maybe they'll be the next purchase uh, but the Get RX sandbags pretty good deal uh, very sturdy I'm a fan of it I do like that little stitch thing in the middle that kind of gives you a little gripping point maybe that's making the sandbag uh, easy to press but hey you know it is what it is and again with the sandbag throws there wrapping it up uh, here we move on to day 4 uh, the th final day of the third week starting off with some block pulls what you notice here I did decrease the height of the blocks uh, for no reason then I just wanted to try it out again so here we have like mid shin it's really raised maybe 2-3 to three inches so we definitely won't see as big of a uh, weight jump that we did in the previous weeks so realistically I probably should be doing this with the same amount of weight I can do for a one rep max or close to it, but we are sticking to the 440 pound weight, which is about 55 pounds shy of my current one rep max. And we are using some wrist, wrist straps there just to make sure that the shoulders stay in symmetry. Whenever we do like super heavy deadlifts, I like to stick with uh, using wrist straps there just so I don't use that alternate grip mainly just for ease of using convenience uh, moving on here to some single arm dumbbell overhead pressing uh, again in trying to introduce some strongman style movements this would be great to have if I had a circus style dumbbell or another way to load a heavy dumbbell this is really the heaviest single arm dumbbell I have the kettlebell is 53 pounds so not much difference there and again, even though it is light, I do, because we can't play with the weight, just playing with the amount of reps. So here we have 10 reps for the overhead press. And I think it's still, I think it's somewhat still effective, mainly training the stability of the core because we do offset that weight. We do have to maintain that balance. And I definitely do feel it in my uh, back as well, stabilizing the lift. I am wearing a belt there in order to help stabilize again. And then just throwing and wrapping up with some ab works, just some hanging leg raises. Uh, these are good. I, I like the hanging leg raise just because, again, it works on the grip. And then it does help with uh, just stretching out that back and that shoulder joint. I'm not too concerned with the momentum there as well. Also, my lack of flexibility is showing quite well. Uh, I couldn't keep my legs straight even if I wanted to, which I usually want to do and then wrapping up with the final superset here which is a close grip incline bench press uh opting for the incline bench press to kind of help drive up both the overhead press and the bench press in the assistance movements um, just because i didn't do any incline bench press yet this week i want to throw this in at the end here just so we could get some more uh tricep and some shoulder activation there in the in the movement uh, and then here is some cleans I did notice in my Dark Horse program when they called for the clean and press my clean was quite weak and I think I tapped out at like 200 ish pounds so not great not a great power clean uh, weight especially when I thought I could have potentially push press more weight if I was able to clean more weight so I'm hoping to increase my ability to do some cleans at the very least just because if I'm wanting to shift over to strongman the, the clean getting something from floor to overhead is one of the main movement patterns and being able to clean effectively even with a regular barbell not with a strongman implement I think will help transfer over just because it is that similar movement pattern and I don't have any strongman implements to kind of practice without so this will have to do so that wraps up the third week of training under the modified strength template. Uh, I'll leave a playlist right here so you can check out the previous training vlogs, weekly training vlogs, and stay tuned for the next video this week, which will be some sort of mindset video. This has been someone from Win Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.